All right, guys, welcome to the Hungry for More call. I got my man Darion about to join us. Uh, he's been helping families virtually all across the country and helps about 30 families a month. Uh, Darion, welcome, man. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. You know, glad to uh, share some knowledge and just ultimately help, help everybody progress forward and get better. Awesome, brother. Well, um, let's get started, man. So tell us, how did you find out about FFL? What did you do before? And then we'll go from there. Yeah, so I was, uh, you know, prior to FFL, I was at a practice company. Um, not going to say the name of the company, but, you know, starting off 30% comp. I, I got promoted to a manager, went up to 35% comp. But, you know, ultimately, uh, we worked on Worksite and COVID kind of just killed, killed the whole company. And so um, my good friend, Weston Whitlock, who actually worked at the other company, actually brought us over. You know, he told us about the, the great opportunity here at FFL, you know, getting paid at least 100% of what you're worth and then having the opportunity to, you know, propel forward and the sky's the limit here. So, Okay. Was it pretty much a no-brainer once you heard about FFL? Oh yeah, I mean me and um, you know me me and a couple of my my other business partners we kind of just I mean jump right into it. We saw all the opportunity. Um, there was a little bit of, of a learning curve at first, especially transitioning from our last company. But it was all in when we saw it. It was I mean it almost sounded too good to be true, honestly. But you know obviously we're all here, so 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 it is. It, it's it's real, you know. You know it's funny that you say that, man. So I came from another agency before joining Family First, and it was kind of the same deal. I was kind of skeptical, kind of like, this sounds too good to be true. Um, like, are people really making this type of money? Are people really changing their lives like this? And, uh, you know, fast forward to now being here three and a half years, it's changed everything for me. So I can totally relate to you, my man. Um, all right. So let's talk about this. You're doing everything. Well, how long have you been here? So I've been here since last March. So last March. So a little over a year. Yeah. A little bit over a year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, have you always been doing things virtually or were you in the field when you started? No, no. So, so starting off, you know, pretty standard, just like everybody else started off in the field, uh, you know, beginning of COVID primarily just, just only running in-person appointments. I honestly really just committed to, to the virtual, um, about a month ago and everything's been going good, but started off in home. Okay. So you started off in home. How did your transition go from virtual to, or from in-home <laughs> to virtual? Yeah, it was, uh, it, it was, it was an interesting transition to say the least. I, I was giving it a shot for, you know, a little while. I wasn't having the success that I wanted or the success I was having running in home. So, I mean, for a lack of better terms, full transparency, I was kind of scared of it. If, if I'm being honest, I was kind of scared to switch over to, to going virtual, you know, just doing everything over the phone, just because, you know, getting that in-person connection when, when you're meeting with people in home is so much different, but after doing it, you know, developing, developing a system, uh, me and Eric, we've been working real, real hard to put things together. I mean, it, what I'll say is the switch over to virtual has been one of the biggest, you know, biggest things that have progressed my business th thus far. Okay. Well, let's talk about that. What were some of the, what were some of the challenges you had to overcome? Let's say top two, maybe three challenges you had to overcome because I'll be honest, dude, I've been mainly in the field. I've been doing some hybrid sales, but I have not gone hundred percent virtual and probably for the same reason as you, a little bit of fear, a little bit of, you know, trepidation and hesitation of like, you know, making it work. Right. So I'm sure other people can relate to that if they're watching this either live or the replay. So um, share with us what, what you had to overcome, what you did. Um, and then, you know, we'll go from there. Got it. Yeah. So, I mean, number one, the, the, the biggest thing that came up for me first was that it, it's just, I mean, it's just simply a little bit tougher for, for me, for example, uh, you know, instead of, ha instead of having the opportunity to be able to sit in front of somebody, you know, I can physically give them over my business card, my, my state license, you know, here's all the different companies I work with, you know, adversely. Now I'm just a random person calling them on the phone, just getting back to them about a request that they submitted. So the biggest thing initially was uh, getting over that learning curve and being able to develop that same amount of credibility as I was able to develop in the home, but instead, you know, develop, developing a script to where we can do the same exact thing, you know, whether I'm sitting in front of you or, you know, I'm a hundred miles away or, or a thousand miles away in a different state. So that was the first thing, just getting right. comfortable so, with. So hang on. So hang on. So how do you actually build that credibility before we move on to number two? What, what steps do you take? What do you say? If, if, if you're talking to a client, I, we, we want to learn that because that's important. 
Hundred percent. Yeah. So the uh, the way that we structured the script, uh, me and Eric, we've been working a lot together to be able to uh, get the best script possible. And so uh, the, the ways that we're able to develop a lot more credibility, first and foremost, you know, upfront when, when we get on the phone with somebody, once we actually jump into the process, we physically send them over a picture of our state ID as well as our state license for whatever whatever state that they're going to be licensed in. So that's going to be going to be the first piece. Uh, secondarily, is giving everybody full transparency. You know, first and foremost, right and upfront, saying you know, explaining to them. That, what the process is and everything that we're going to be going through in order to uh, be able to get them over options and quotes and things like that. And then lastly, a big thing that I started implementing in right when I get somebody on the phone, you know, I, I tell them that I'm required by the state to go ahead and give you over all of my information. And then secondarily, I really like to emphasize the fact that, you know, you can either go over to, to the State Department uh, of Insurance website, A, first and foremost, or secondarily, you can just simply call into the Department of Insurance for whatever state that you're in to validate that I am who I'm supposed to be. So I, I just like to give them so many different ways to be able to validate me, sending them a picture of my ID, my state license. You know, you can go on, go right on Google and look, look my information up with my state license number or secondarily, you can just call in, um, you know, to whatever state you're in to the Department of Insurance to confirm me. Okay. So credibility, number one, you walked us through what you do there. What's the, what's the next thing you had to overcome? So uh, second biggest thing I would say I had to overcome was just... When, when I talk, being a lot more clear and, and concise when I talk, right? So when you're at home, there's a lot more opportunity for you to make mistakes. You might have a little slip up with words or, you know, say the wrong word. But when, when you're on the phone, it's a lot easier to uh, misspeak. And then if you misspeak, I mean, someone can just hang right up on you compared to you're in someone's home. They, <laughs> they can't hang up on you when you're in the house. So um, primarily, we had to develop a script to where, you know, we can follow that word for word and get the same result or a very similar result uh, every time that we talk with somebody. So the biggest the, the biggest part for number two is just going to be the script, developing that script so we can follow the same word track and get very similar results to every single person that we talk to. Okay. All right. Any other tips in the transition? Any other things that people need to be mindful of? Um. I would say biggest tips that I, that, that I would suggest if you're switching over to virtual, doing everything virtually, it's just, you know, uh, confidence breeds confidence. So really, really nailing down whatever script you're going to be using, what, you know, whatever team it's going to be with. But I mean, reading through that even every single morning a couple of times so that you can be prepared every time something comes up when you're talking to somebody. But most importantly, if you get knocked off and knocked a little bit off track, you can make a quick transition and get right back on script so that you're you're not too off script. You're not saying the wrong things, but, you know, you're able to follow down that that path that you're usually able to follow down but when talking to most people all right so here's the magic question man when people are going to virtual right everyone's like all right what leads are you working right if someone's selling 30 families a month 50 families whatever number is they're like all right you must have the magic leads right so what magic leads does darion have we need to know Here's what I'll say. I'll say leads are leads are leads. All leads are great, but the uh, the primary leads that I'm focusing on and I've been running are going to be smart financial leads, uh, TTC leads, and then Nashville financial leads. So I'm trying to get a good mix for between internet, final expense, and mortgage protection. So TTC, Nashville, what was the other one? Smart financial leads. Smart financial. Yes, sir. Right. And Nashville, those are mortgage, aren't they? Yeah, Nashville. Nashville's are going to be uh, direct direct mortgage mailers, so you know individuals who call into the automated line, and then yeah, so those are going to be direct okay. mail there. All right, so there's you got a different amount of leads or a different um, mix of leads. Um, what would you say your lead spend is weekly and monthly? Yeah. So based upon uh, the, the lead flow for a week, I, I'd say anywhere between 1500 and 2000 uh, per week. And then, you know, capping out, depending on if the lead flow might be a little bit behind, might have to hop in the CRM, but maxing out at about 2000 a week. And then, you know, total for the month would be around 8000 for, for the lead spend. Okay. So 8000 a month lead spend, and then you're, you're helping about 30 families a month or so. Is that right? 25 to 30 families. Yeah. 25 to 30 families. So if you guys know the math, that means you're probably left with, you know, some decent profitability, 14 to 14 to 18 grand in, in profitability. Right. So that's, yeah. that's, that's substantial. Right. Yeah, so, sure. all right. So talk to us about your process. Now, are you calling or are you doing one call closes? Are you texting for appointments? Are you scheduling appointments? The people want to know, man. Yeah, for sure. So the uh, when going over to virtual, I mean, the biggest thing that I recommend is going to be a, a system called Ringy, 
And so this is actually be a, a, an automated dialer system. Not only do they dial, they do automated text messages for you. They do follow up text messages. I mean, you can hook up your Google calendar to them. And so when it comes to uh, my process, I, I am doing one call to close. If I have to set a phone appointment, I'll set it up for same day. Uh, sometimes I'll go, I'll go next day if they really can't meet. But uh, primarily, I'm just doing call to close. And then secondarily with that ringy system, it, it has a lot of uh, information being sent out every single day. Every time I get a new lead in, they get an automated text message. So I don't even have to worry about that. It's hands off. All I have to do is sit there, you know, respond to the text messages and then dial new leads as they come in and come through. That ringy system has been real transitional and uh, propelled, I mean, propelled me a lot forward when being able to be as, as efficient as possible, you know, doing the call to close. Okay. So, um, so automation is key. Right. Um, Ringy allows you to automate text messages, emails, makes it easier for you to call also. And uh, you have a power dialer built into that. So if you guys don't have that, I highly suggest you sign up for it. That'll help you um, improve your business because, hey, man, when I started, dude, we didn't have any of this technology. Uh, <laughs> right. You know, it, it's like I, I like to use the old analogy. It's like, hey, you know, when I was going back to school, when I was going to school back in the day, we had to walk up a hill barefoot, right? Like that whole, that whole thing you hear, like I was manually dialing, yeah. manually dialing my leads, just three, 400 dials on my phone. And I'm like, all right, something's got to give. And, and luckily we found some solutions that have helped agents uh, become more efficient, become more effective. Um, all right. So we got that. So talk to us in terms of number of contacts, number of dials you make a day. Like what does that activity look like? Because I think a lot of times people think that what you do in the home, how you set up your in-home, the amount of activity to set appointments is the same as going virtual. Is the, is the, it requires the same amount of work. And I think it's different, but I, I, I want to hear it from you. For sure. It's 100% different. So when you're on the phone, just like I said, it's a lot tougher to be able to develop that credibility. You know, people can't see you. They, they don't know what you look like physically and things like that. And so when it comes to running appointments, uh, what I found a, a good conversion ratio for me is, is every $150 that I make, I'm, I'm typically going to be getting one close. And so uh, with that being said, I mean, throughout a day, any given day, I, I'd say I talk to 10 to 15 people a day. My goal is to close out uh, three families. Uh, commonly, I'm getting about, you know, two to three families protected on a day to day basis. But your activity when you're on the phone does have to be a lot higher when you're doing call to close, because it's a lot different if you just sit down on a Monday, you know, you, you might set up up uh, 15 appointments for the next two days, you go out, you know, you're driving around running these appointments, as in comparison to if you're going to be doing direct call to close, you know, <clears throat> you're calling individuals multiple times throughout the day. So sometimes they might be at work, um, you know, sometimes they maybe do something doing something else. So you have to have your activity a lot higher. For me, my goal every single dial day is a minimum of 400 dials, um, you know, four to 500 dials every single dial day, which is what my goal is going to be. Well, when you're virtual, every day is dial day, am I right? Every single day, Monday through Saturday, every single day is dial day. So you're stuck a week, right? Yeah. Okay, six days a week. I like the ratio, right? I, I'm big on ratios. And so I think if you guys haven't incorporated or don't know what ratio to go from, it sounds like Darian's already nailed that down. So 150 dials should equate to one sale, right? Yeah. One family help. So you make $300 in a day, you help two families. Now, obviously this is an average, right? It's not a scientific, right? It's, it's, Hey, sometimes it might, you might close within a hundred dials. Sometimes it might take you 200 dials, right? But on average, your goal is to close and help two to three families. So that means you're dialing between 300 to maybe 450 families. That sound about right. Correct. Yep. Yep. Right in that range. Okay. And let me ask you this, man how much time does that take you to do? Right. Cause I think, I think a lot of times people underestimate the time. Now, listen, I get it. You got to work until the job's done, but is it an eight hour day to dial that many dials? Is it a 12 hour day? Just, you know, what, what does that look like? Gotcha. So the schedule that, that we run as of right now, you know, we're still jumping into this and kind of getting everything dialed in. But the system that we run right now is dialing from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. and then from 2 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. On, on the closing end of the day. And so, you know, what you also have to keep in mind is that with call to close, if you're going to 
have somebody pick up the phone. You're going to go through all the validation and have a good quality conversation. That appointment is at least going to take an hour, at least an hour to an hour and a half. If you're a little bit newer, it might extend a little bit past that, but you have to be ready for, for that hour, you know, within the day. So that's why when, when I say, you know, four to 450 calls is because in the morning I might talk to five people, you know, out of those five, I might have two good quality conversations. And I just, <laughs> I haven't, and those might come up right in the beginning of the day. So it might be coming up on 11 o'clock and I've only made a hundred dollars because I, you know, I've talked to so many people. And so, um, you know, I mean, that's what, that's what it's really going to come down to. You have to be aware of the time management, you know, giving yourself at least an eight hour dial period is definitely going to give you the opportunity to, uh, you know, make those dials that you need to make to get the ratios up. But most importantly, you know, in order to, for you to be able to talk to as many people possible so you can close out and hit your goal for the day. All right. So you, you have a schedule, obviously. Yeah. Right. And it sounds like you run eight to 12. You take a, a longer lunch and maybe maybe you're doing other stuff. Admin maybe work, things like admin. That. Are you recruiting? Are you building an agency, too? Yep. Yep. And do you use that time to help build your agency? Correct. Yeah. So uh, interviews are going to be, uh, you know, what we're starting to implement now in, in those times uh, during lunch, things like that as well. Got it. So eight to 12 is dial session. We're, we're hammering the phones. We're making calls. We're, we're making sales. Twelve to 2.30, you're building your agency, you're doing admin work, you get back on the phone at 2.30 and then you go to 6, 6.30, something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. And let, let me ask you this, man, because you know, I think a lot of times people, when they're working from home, they're working virtually, they, they could fall into this trap of like, they get really comfortable, right? What, what have you found um, to make sure that you stay motivated or you stay focused while you're at home you stick to your schedule so you're not getting off track and and you're not you know missing your goals right <laughs> I, I think you just said it right there at the end goals you know having having those uh, those benchmarks and having things that you're working towards but i mean most importantly when it comes down to in order to keep on pushing to wake up every single day i mean you have to have a why right you have to have why you wake up every single day, uh, what you're working for, and, you know, let it be your family, let it be your kids, whatever it may be. I mean, personally, for me, I'm real young, so I'm still, in, in, you know, trying to build things and create this future for myself. So for me, every single day, I wake up just to be a better, you know, a better version of myself. I'm waking up, compete with myself every day, but, you know, I have goals to, to be, be purchasing my first home and, uh, you know, just ultimately creating things for my family later on down the line. But, you know, when it comes down to it, you just have to stay consistent, keep a positive mindset, but, you know, focus really in on your why and then have some goals set in stone so that you have something that you're looking at, something that you're running towards every single day. Dude, I have no doubt in my mind you're going to hit your goals. I, I, I love your energy. Um, you're well-spoken. You're driven. Um, and obviously, you sell at a high level, man. So you keep that up. You'll definitely achieve your goals. I, I have no doubt about it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, all right, so let's talk about. Well, there, there was a there was a question dropped in the chat. Um, so, how many how many closes are you getting from calls versus text messages? So, Ken Ringy, you mentioned earlier, it's sending automated text messages, right? And so sometimes someone might send you a response and say, you know, give me a call at five p.m. or after six or whatever the case may be. Do you do you know um, a percentage or a number of you know sales made that? came from a phone call versus a text message? I, I don't have a specific ratio set out for that. Uh, what I'll say is that when you're doing call to close and just in general, when you're on the phone, if, if you're setting phone appointments, your show rate is <laughs> it's going to be astronomically lower than it is if you're running in person. So let's say, you know, I, I um, so I'd say out of every 10 text messages that, that, that I get in, I'll be closing, I mean, two to three of those as in comparison to, if I'm just doing straight call to close, you know, I'll be more so closing you know, five to seven of those. It, it really just, um, depends on how they're coming through, but setting appointments is going to be a lot less of, you know, a lot less stick rate. It's going to be a lot less people showing up. So it's really preferred to, if you can, I mean, just ask them to grab that pen and paper right now so you can take care of it and you'll definitely get better results. You know, if you're able to just, uh, hit as many people as possible possible compared to trying to set up appointments all day. Okay. Another question was dropped in the chat. How many states are you licensed in um, and any specific states that you would recommend? Great. So as of right now, I am currently licensed in four states. I'm actually getting ready to get licensed in a couple more states as of right now. And then I'm sorry, what was the second part of that question? Um, any specific states? Specific states. Hmm. Here, here's what I'll say. So I, I wouldn't, I, I don't necessarily have any specific states off the top of my head. I mean, what I'll say is that 
you know, every single state is great because in every single state, there are people who are who need our help and people that need our protection. Uh, what I'd say is if you're going to be doing a call to close, I would suggest getting licensing states on the East Coast and the West Coast and even, um, you know, was it Eastern? It's not Eastern Standard Time, Central Time as well, so that you can have, you know, you can even be start starting dials at 6 a.m. your time. And if you're dialing to, to the East Coast, you're going to have individuals who are up and awake and then, you know, vice versa. So I would just recommend having a, a good diversification of leads on both the East Coast, you know, Central Time as well as the West Coast. So you can be dialing at any time and have as, you know, as many contacts as possible. All right. So, so talk to us about this, man. What is it like now going from being in the field to being at home working or from, you know, from an office, whatever, right. But not being on the road. What, what's that feeling like? What, what's it done for you, for your family? What talk to us about that. I mean, with, with the gas prices going up right now, you know, is this <laughs> help, help not a lot from, from that department. Um, but you know, what I'll say is that, <laughs> when, when I first started doing from home, you know, it, it felt a lot better to be able to talk to people, you know, close them right over the phone. And I don't have to go and, you know, put 300 miles on my car in one day because I, I was literally doing that. I mean, driving around like crazy. So it feels a lot more. I mean, for me, it just felt just a little bit more fulfilling knowing that I can do the same exact things that I'm doing from home. If not more, I can actually help more families working right from my house or right from my office as in comparison to, you know, driving around. And that's ultimately where my mindset, where, where it shifted to, because the goal is to be able to help and, and protect the masses. Our job, you know, as insurance agents are to be able to protect as many families as possible. And with that being said, if you're, if you're doing over the phone call to close, you have a much bigger opportunity to be able to protect more families because you're not limited to, you know, a maximum of, of 10 appointments in a day. Instead, I mean, let's say you make, you know, $600 in a day, you can talk to so many more people than you could if you're driving around, you know, home to home. So that's just where my mindset shifted to helping the masses, being able to protect as many people as possible, but then also doing it in, in the most efficient way as possible. Got it. Okay. So there's another question that was dropped in from the group. Do you text as part of your uh, as part of your call strategy, or do you have a separate texting strategy separate from calling? So, uh, so what I do every single time a lead comes in with my ringy, they they automatically receive a text message right when they come through. So what that does that that text message actually ha has my name in it. So every time I call somebody who has, you know, an iPhone, for example, some Androids do it as well. Uh, but once I call them, it'll pop up saying, you know, maybe Darion or, or maybe Darion Lavo Hutchinson, whatever my name says um, in, inside of the text message. And so that's I, I don't do too much texting myself. I have Ringy do it all unless I'm just simply responding to people to set up appointments. But aside from that, no, I, I just have Ringy do all my automated text messages. I, I just respond to people when they text me back. And then, uh, you know, I just have, have my name put in there so they can know I'm calling when I call them. So you're just straight phone calls and then Ringy does the rest. Yeah, that's why Ringy is so great because I don't have to send out, you know, 200 text messages a day. Awesome, man. Awesome. All right. So let me ask you this, man. What, what tips do you have for selling virtually? What tips, word tracks, things that if I'm new, right, there's people on here right now that are new that maybe not have started. Um, but what would you suggest for them? for them to be successful, um, specific to new agents and, and maybe people that were in home are now switching to virtual. What tips would you have for them to outside of what you shared on the credibility piece? Sure. So uh, biggest tips I give when it, when it comes to switching to virtual, I mean, honestly, it, it's not rocket science. It's not anything super crazy over the moon, you know, like super difficult. The main thing that I'll say when it comes to actually doing the, the call to close is, is ha having the mental fortitude to be able to, to keep up with it because it is a little bit tougher. It's a little bit more of a mental challenge. Um, but I mean, the biggest things that I would say, just like earlier, is just making sure that you can have a script that you can follow, um, you know, setting up a very specific schedule to where you're committed to this schedule. Just like I said, I, I start dials at eight and I end dials at 630. So making sure that you're set to a committed schedule so that, you know, if you don't have a good day one day, Let's say you go two days without protecting any families. You still have a schedule, um, you know, in a mindset that you can get right into by following following your schedule and having your rituals set up and things like that. I mean, but aside from that, you know, the biggest thing is having a script, making sure that you're staying consistent every single day, no matter what your results were for the day. I mean, even if you zero out, you got to wake up and, and, and grind just as hard as you did the day, the day before to be even better. Um, and then lastly, just ha having that routine and having that schedule. Aside from that, you know, <laughs> step number four is always you just got to put in that work. You know, you got to work hard, stay consistent, everything like that. Yep, I, I, uh, 
I read a post for, from Alex Hermosi, which a lot of people know who he is. He's a beast entrepreneur, just, you know, um, he's got a lot of videos out there. And he says a lot of people nowadays, they're, they're focused on daily affirmations. They're focused on journaling. They're focused on all these things to help with self-improvement. He goes, but you know, the one thing that helps with self-improvement the, the most, he put working. <laughs> right. So <laughs> we can do all those things, man, but if you're not working, you're not, you're not really improving. Right. So, um, I, I, I agree with you, brother. I agree with you on that. Um, is there anything unique about your script? Right. I, you know, a lot of people ask, well, what's, it's kind of like the same question that you get with leads. Well, what magic leads are you working? What are you doing versus what are you right? So a script to me, a script is a script. Um, you have to be unique or excuse me, you have to be yourself on your script, right? You have to sound like you, right? Cause if you don't sound like you, you're, you just, you won't flow. Um, and people will pick up on that, but is there anything unique about your script, um, that, you know, either you want to share or even share the script, but, um, there was a question drop. That's why I'm asking that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I'd be more than happy to be able to share the script. Like I said, I'm just here to help as many people win as possible. Um, it's not like it's a, it's a hidden secret or anything like that. I, I'd be more than happy to share the script with everybody. And then secondarily, so uh, what I'll say is unique about our script. I mean, me and Eric, we, we, we've been we've been working real hard together to be able to uh, develop the script to where, you know, there are a couple of very transitional points to where, you know, if someone's going to sign up or not. So there's two transitional points that we have within our script. Like I said, I'm going to share it. Um, but the first the first transitional point is, is right when somebody picks up the phone. The first thing we say is, you know, hey, John, I know you filled out this request for information. Do me a favor and go and grab a pen and paper, you know, so I can go and give you over this information that you requested. Now, if someone right off the bat says, hey, OK, you know, I got time right now. We can take care of it. That's you, you pass number one. Now, alternatively, if they say no, you're either setting up an appointment or, or secondarily, you know, you're just going to have to call them back at, a, at another time. And then secondarily, the, the second transition apart that we have in our script, which eliminates a lot of the uh, the tediousness of having to go through the whole process. And then you get to the end and someone doesn't want to give you their social or give you their banking information. Mm -hmm. So we let them know right up front, you know, with, with gold mark number two, hey, in the application, the insurance companies are going to require three pieces of your information. First and foremost, the dollars are going to be a driver's license number um, or a state ID number, social security number, as well as <clears throat> uh, payment information. So if you're approved, you know, the company has somewhere to draft your premiums from. As long as, as long as someone says, hey, you know, we're good to go. I'm comfortable with that. I know you already sent me a picture with your state ID and everything like that. That's going to be check mark number two for us to know that someone's going to be signing up. So that's that's been something that we implemented that's real big to make sure that we're not wasting time with people on the phone. It's really easy to do that. Go through the whole process, you know, with with five people in a day, but none of them are buyers because they're not comfortable doing stuff over the phone. So we implemented those portions in. Uh, secondarily, I'd say another big thing is the Socratic method. So asking a lot of questions throughout the script, which are going to be, um, you know, we, we try to implement a lot of science into it. So having people say yes the whole time throughout the script, you know, is, is this your address? Yes. You know, you list your date, your date of birth is this. Yes. And so also, um, I would also say we focus really in on the why, you know, having the, the individuals that we're talking with explain to us why they need the coverage, having them explain to us why, why they need the benefits. So we have a good seven or eight questions that are literally diving in on, you know, what was going through your mind when you filled this out? What were you hoping to achieve? If something happened to you, you know, if you passed away tomorrow, <clears throat> a little bit earlier than expected, uh, who would be the individual that'd be responsible for taking care of this? So, so it's a lot of pulling out emotions so we can get people to act quick on the phone. It, it's a lot. It's really easy to talk to people on the phone. You don't ask the right questions there. Oh, I want to think about it. I, I got to go do some shopping around. But if you ask the right questions and you lead them down the proper pathway, you can get them to make that quick instant decision. I, when I'm talking to somebody after they pass through the check marks, I, I really don't have you know, that many times when they're like, oh, I got to think about it, or I want to talk to my spouse, because we set everything up properly to where they, they can make that instant decision. And like I said, I, I'd be more than happy to share the script with you guys. Yeah, you can shoot me an email, we'll connect after and then we'll share it with everybody. For sure. Um, we could even drop it in on YouTube and, and make it downloadable as well. Um, all right, so let me ask this, man. So where are you? Or when are you actually asking those questions? This really the second part? that the client's going to need to share their personal information, their social, their banking. Cause I think that's key. I'm assuming you're doing it on the front end, but I want to hear it from you. Yeah. So, so, uh, so initially, you know, we just introduce ourselves, we give over all of our information, you know, we tell everybody they're going to be non-medical benefits. And so <clears throat> after we go through those questioning with, you know, why'd you fill this out? What were you mainly hoping to achieve so that we can get them thinking from an emotional standpoint, we, we can get them actually feeling that they need this 
you know, because they obviously requested. After that point, you know, we let them know that <clears throat> the process is extremely simple. We cover a couple more questions. And then after that is when we actually let them know, hey, the insurance companies, you know, before, well, sorry, let me take a step back here. So after we ask them those initial questions, we go ahead and let them know that, you know, today we can't commit to anything. My job today is just to help you to see if you can actually be approved for an option by submitting a request for coverage. But like I said, we can't commit to anything today. And so in order to complete that request for coverage, and then that's the point where we jump into uh, asking them or letting them know that they are going to require those three pieces of information. And that comes right before we jump into to the medical questioning, right? And so that's going to be all done on, on the first page. We're, we're literally covering all that information and letting them know about, you know, we're going to require social payment information um, on the first page there. So you're doing that before you get in medical questions. So that way, you know, I'm not going through all these nah, we, medical nah. questions, financial inventory, learning all this about you just for you to tell me I'm basically not serious, right? Because if they're telling you they're not giving you a social payment, they're just not serious, right? So you're eliminating it right from the from the jump. Yeah, there, there, there's there's no point <laughs> there's no point to waste our time, waste their time, and, and try to you know pressure somebody or, or try to convince them that we're legit and you know we can do it over the phone. I mean, we know who we are, so instead of spending that extra time trying to fight with people, you just go and find people who are actually need this and who are serious, right? And that's where you have the lead flow coming into where you can do that. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Okay. I had another question and I completely lost my train of thought. Um, it happens to me all the time. <laughs> yeah, the time. I get it. <laughs> all right. So we're a So you're, what I'm hearing you say, man, is you still have control and structure on your calls like we do in the in-home, right? And we're telling them, we're explaining the process. We just do it in a slightly different version because now you're not in front of them they're only hearing you on the phone, right? They're virtual. Right. So you, that's where you have to be a little bit more descriptive, a little bit uh, better in your communication possibly because, um, you know, if you don't communicate something properly, then, you know, they may misunderstand, they may uh, misread and, and, you know, not continue forward. So hundred percent. And, and that's exactly why I said there's a big learning curve switching from in home over to over the phone, because there's a lot more room for error. There's a lot more times where you might say, you know, you might say one word wrong and someone's like, oh, God, nah, this is gonna, I'm just going to hang up on you right now. Right. And so uh, that's also why I said it, it, it's I mean, the biggest thing if you're going to be doing call to close. I mean, you have to know your script. You have to know, you know, those key transition points so you can have the right voice inflection, you know, so you can have the right tonality so you can hit certain points in the script and be able to convey the proper message. Like I was saying, to lead them down the proper pathway, you know, to the de desired end result, which is getting them protected. All right. Last question here, and then we'll get you back because I know you got to get back to your business just like we do. Um, someone asked, how do you create an ID that you send them kind of like a, a digital badge? Do you have a system that you use? Are you, is there something specific you're doing that we can duplicate? No, I, I just take a picture of my regular ID. I, I just send them right over a, a regular picture. Um, so, so what I do, I, I just get my state license and then I get my regular ID. You know, I, I just put it right on there. I had a black background that I set up for all my states. I, I just simply take a regular picture. So I get a regular printout of my state license, get my ID, put it right on there, and, and then just text them over a picture. And when you say your ID, you're talking driver's license? Yeah, driver's license, state ID. Yeah, j just a regular um, okay. state ID. Nothing crazy, right? Just you're, no, you're in the no. basics. I'm we're not just, a scientist. I don't. I don't know how to create stuff like that. I, I I just take pictures. Yeah, we're not we're not engineers. We're salespeople, right? We, <laughs> right. we help people with what we know we're good at, which is insurance. So not cool, that man. smart. Uh, well, listen, Darion, you're you're a stud. Um, I can tell. You know, you're obviously successful for a reason. You figured this out. You got your process down. You have your word tracks down. You know what you're doing. Any final tips as we kind of wrap this up for? Uh, new agents or agents that are maybe just needing to get a little bit better in virtual? Yeah, sure. I mean, so I, I'd say uh, the first thing, first and foremost, you know, mindset is everything. Just like I was saying earlier, having that having that routine, which you can fall back on when some days you might not be feeling it. I mean, I, I have days, you know, all the time where I don't want to get out of bed. I don't want to wake up, but I know that in order to hit my goals, I, I got to keep pushing. I got to keep going through. So maintaining a, a strong mental mental fortitude and being able to get up every single day and push past adversities. I mean, we all have adversities, but really being able to push past those is, is going to be something transitional. So if you don't have a morning routine, I, I would highly suggest you getting one, even if it's, if it's just waking up to the gym or waking up in the morning, going to the gym and then eating breakfast after whatever it may be. And then, I mean, the, the secondary, the secondary thing is just going to be, I mean, hard work. 
know, in order to be successful in anything, you just have to work hard. So uh, just like initially when you start off running in person, uh, when it comes to on the phones, there's going to be a big learning curve. You have to get through it and you have to stay consistent and put in that work so you can get to the point to where you're pumping out the results, you know, that, that you're that you're desiring, uh, not just settling for, for what you what you've been getting so far. Dude, that's money dropping gems this whole call. Guys, uh, show Darion some love. Drop a DH in the chat. Show the man some love. He dropped some gems on us. He blessed us with his time. He blessed us with his presence and his knowledge. Darion, thank you so much, my man. Appreciate you joining us. Um, thank you for pouring into our team. It's been an honor. Um, and I look forward to your continued success. And uh, hey, when you move to Arizona, man, you have a home here with us. You know, um, so that. Just know that you're, you're always welcome here. Okay. Yeah. hundred percent. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome, man. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. No problem. You guys have a good one.